Hello and welcome to Front Runner Motorsport. Not a lot of top level motor racing this past weekend, but there was still a lot of motorsport action from around the world. The penultimate weekend of Super Formula, the final round of the European Rallycross, Australian Supercars alongside DTM at the Lausitz Ring, TCR World Tour in Uruguay, TCR UK, NASCAR and Nitrocross. So with all that to get through, subscribe now and let's jump into the video. The penultimate weekend in Super Formula came to us from Motegi, Japan. Tomoki Najiri was on pole and needed to win to keep the hopes of a third title in a row alive. Teammate Liam Lawson started third but challenged Najiri round the outside of turn one. What happened next was one of the most shocking moments in motorsport in 2023. Liam Lawson lost control on the dirt, went around and suddenly he was in front of the oncoming pack. Tadasuki Makino, Nobuharu Matsushita and Yuhi Sekaguchi collided with Lawson with two cars going over the top. An early red flag to get us started. Thankfully, everyone was okay. The race restarted under safety car. Amazingly, Lawson rejoined the race at the back and then was given a penalty for a pit stop infringement. Not his weekend. So it looked like Lawson was going to score no points. Miata had dropped to 17th but climbed to 12th at a track notorious for being difficult to overtake at. He was helped by a few more retirements. Sho Suboy retired with mechanical issues and Kakanoshi and Ota made contact with Ren Sato in the pits. They both kept going temporarily, but Ota's front row start was ruined by a stall at the first start and now this moment of chaos from Sato. Kamui Kobayashi was running well in fourth until he was hit with a slow stop. All this played into the hands of Miata. So the usually quiet Super Formula was absolutely manic in Motegi. We weren't even halfway through the race and it was declared a wet race. The race did calm down a bit, Najiri had a bit of a slow stop and that gave Ryo Hirakara a chance to catch him on the overcut, but Hirakara had a slow stop as well, so it was status quo. There was more drama to come, Naoki Yamamoto went for a dive on Hirakawa, but sent him sideways. Naoki Yamamoto went off with damage shortly after, another retirement and another place for Miata and Lawson. Miata had come up from 17th place to 4th after his pit stop and he was now chasing a hobbled Hirakawa over the last seven laps. He couldn't catch him and Tomoki Najiri won with ease. Sets up a lovely three-way fight at Suzuka for the finale. Miata, Lawson and Najiri are separated by just 10 points and with bad blood between the Mugen pair, all gloves are off. DTM came to us from the Lausitz ring and Luca Engsler was an exeter from the race. He's a great touring car driver, but he is having a horrible time in DTM. I bet he misses racing in the ADAC TCR series. Race 1 was pretty straightforward, championship leader Thomas Praining was stuck outside the points but made some beautiful moves, especially past Maximilian Pohl. So in awe was the Lambo driver, he went off a few corners later and took a returning Marvin Dinst with him. Jack Aitken took his first DTM win and we move on to race 2. It was a good clean race until Lamborghini duo Frank Pereira and Clemens Schmidt collided. Marco Bortoletti won the race and takes the lead in the championship with 3 rounds left. V8 supercars from the bend. We had crashes at the start of the first two races. Will Brown, the most high profile victim of race one, and that puts a massive dent in his title hopes. The rest of the race was all about tyre management and pit stops. Some great overtaking and Brody Kostecki was ahead of all his rivals taking the win, which he did again in race two. Cam Waters was the unfortunate one at the first turn this time round, and the race went the same as the first, with some top overtaking and Kostecki winning. Race three went a lot smoother for everyone, and Brody Kostecki completed a perfect weekend, whilst his main rivals all had average weekends, especially with Brown retiring from race 1 and Feeney off at the end of race 3. This is the strongest we have seen the championship advantage in 2023. It was also a good weekend for Thomas Randall, who had a good run of three podiums, and Matthew Payne, the former Toyota Racing Series champion, got his best ever results. Six races left and Kostecki has a 176 point lead, but Bathurst is coming up soon. The TCR World Tour began its stint in South America at the El Pinar track in Uruguay, the home track of World Tour regular Santiago Arusha and the TCR South America field. I was open to a very different race with a lot of European drivers not used to the El Pinar track and contending against the South American racers. Sadly this was another dull affair. Home hero Santiago Arusha won from pole followed by a much improved Ted Bjork. The top TCR South America runner was in 10th. Race 2 was equally dull, at least we got to see Mark Ringha try and hold off Mikel Ascona for the last part of the race but it looked very difficult to overtake here. But this race was ruined by two safety car periods. 
If the World Tour was supposed to put a spotlight on regional drivers, it has failed. The South Americans barely featured in these races. I guess they'd get another go this coming weekend in Argentina. Mark Ringhart won his first race in the World Touring Cars since 2019, but Jan Erlache leads the championship. We had two rounds of Nitro Rallycross from Utah, free to watch on Rumble. Definitely the top Rallycross championship at the moment. There's more than six cars and none of them are on fire. Fraser McConnell came in as championship leader after round one, but both he and Benito Guerrero spun in LCQ2, meaning the Jamaican did not make the final, the first shock of the weekend. Conor Martel had been quick all weekend but got damaged at the start of the final, and Travis Pastrana just held off Kevin Erickson and Andreas Backerud for the win. Round three of Nitro Cross, the first heat was insane. First, Travis Pastrana makes contact with Fraser McConnell and retires. Then Ollie Bennett's bonnet comes up. Then Fraser McConnell drives off the track. Benito Guerrero must not have been able to believe his luck. Pastrana and McConnell ended up in the LCQ race against a very quick Conor Martel and a game Ollie Erickson. Travis spun out and the winner of day one was out before the day two final. The final itself was pretty good. Andreas Backward won, but didn't do the Joe collapse, so reigning champion Robin Larson took the win. But it's Kevin Erickson who leads the championship, and he has scored a podium in all three rounds so far. Nitro is done until November, so now try to remember it still exists. European Rallycross was the most high-profile event in Germany, with World Rallycross once again sidelined. The championship was all sorted in the heats as Anton Markland wins his second European championship. Lucky he did it in the heats, he crashed out the semis, leaving Yanis Baumannis to take the overall win. We had Euro RX3 and World RX2 as well. Damian Litvinovic won the Euro RX3 title after a controversial finish in which he made contact with teammate and title rival Espen etc. and Nils Anderson won World RX2. It'll be interesting to see if any of these drivers progress up to the World Series, if it still exists in 2024. Finally, NASCAR at Watkins Glen, and this has become a game of spot the international superstar. Well, it was just Mike Rockenfeller this time, but this was still a fun race, more race tracks, less ovals NASCAR, recipe for success. William Byron won, but as I always say with NASCAR, it doesn't really matter all that much. So that was all the action from the past weekend. My race of the weekend has to be the Super Formula race at Mategi. Such drama, such action, much fun. Honestly, one of the best races I've seen in 2023. Next weekend, we have the return of Formula 1 from its summer hibernation, along with Formula 2, NASCAR, IndyCar, Indy NXT and the IMSA are all coming from America, Super GT in Japan, British Touring Cars, TCR World Tour, as well as European Le Mans. Plenty to keep an eye on, so make sure you subscribe, leave your thoughts down below, and have a good one.